uh, almost a tad bit, not philosophical, but it asks some decent questions about uh, what's but, going on within the film industry. Mm. Not the actual comic industry, but the film industry. So okay. uh, this one is called, this is from Bleeding Cool. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, Bounding Into Comics. I got that one wrong. Uh, from Slade Hale. And this one says, Awokeness or superhero fatigue, what exactly is killing the MCU? So obviously that is highly editorialized. Mm -hmm. Whether you believe the industry is being killed or not is uh, kind of uh, up for interpretation, I guess. I kind of tend to believe that the, the movies are doing about as well as you expect them to do mm -hmm. in the era <coughs> we're living in, yeah. right? Uh, with these trying times as we're still considered to be in with the pandemic and everything. First world problems be like. But I do see a certain amount of, if not fatigue, um, disinterest starting to loom across, uh, mm -hmm. across this genre. Uh, and so the article from Slate Hale starts, it says, following the triumphant end of phase three from the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Disney's follow-up properties have been limping over the finish line, battered and bruised. So far, its phase four Hollywood productions have failed to garner much interest with, uh, with the recent release Eternals bombing hard at the box office. Prior to that, Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings barely made its, mu its budget back before turning a minuscule profit in comparison to all of the MCU films that came before. Even established characters like Natasha Romanoff can't make it work in Black Widow, which made only a fraction of what it should have. That part is accurate. Uh, I would say that Shang-Chi, Shang-Chi, excuse me, uh, did pretty well, get, all things considered, uh, being a character that's fairly, you know, all of these up properties were fairly unknown, except for Black Widow, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, and that movie kind of sh screwed itself over in a way by having a day and date release with uh, Disney+, Plus, meaning that all that money that would have come from the, it still made like, I think, $90 million its opening weekend. Uh, but with a release online the same time, it was never going to make the money that these other ones have made. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is a certain amount of, you know, oversaturation, mm -hmm. I think. You know, we, we, we don't necessarily go out and look for these. Like, I'm always looking for new movies to talk about, but it always comes back to these genres, right? Like, That's true. Uh, well, are you familiar with the YouTube channel Film Theory? Yes. So he talked about it. He said, this movie it was like a new concept and nobody really knows about it. Mm. So he's like, I, I'm glad that they tried. It's like a new concept. W what was he talking about? So he was doing a theory about uh, Thanos. Okay. Yeah, that Thanos was right all along. <laughs> well, that, that cup we saw the Easter egg in, yeah. in uh, Hawkeye. That's why I was so Thanos excited. Was, yeah, Thanos was right. Um, I think it's oversaturation. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of it is just there's so much of it coming out right now. And so much of it is blatantly no longer even barely tangentially connected to the actual source material, right? Mm -hmm. So there's all of the race and gender swaps. Those don't bother me as much with most of the characters, mm -hmm. but there's a certain amount of disinterest when you take... The reason these things had the hype they did, that they had the, the buzz that they did, is because the long-time uh, readers, the ones who have been reading these things for like 40, 30, 40 years... Mm -hmm. It got people excited by talking about it. So their yeah. excitement was infectious in a mm -hmm. way. And now it's just there's so much coming out and so much of it feels, you know, assembly line manufactured uh, by a bunch of corporate executives. So it's, uh, no, no. See, even she doesn't really care. Mm -hmm. uh, I just think it's interesting because uh, the politics to me aren't even the, really the most interesting part of it. They, they talk about, uh, in the article here, they talk about woke politics. And I don't even think that's what it is. I think it's oversaturation. I think it is. Like, mm. people are kind of getting tired of it. Mm. But the reason why I'm not interested, because, like, if Disney screws up X-Men, I'm going to be so mad. I just saw an article yesterday that says uh, Marvel's Inhumans is... Even though it's a failure, it actually helps the MCU write in the X-Men. And I'm like, that's worrisome. How so? I don't know. Like, that's what they said. Like, even though it's a failure, like, people have a gist of what Inhumans are. Pull up the article and I'll, I'll just keep reading. Uh, I think it was a part of um, Bleeding Fool. Okay. So it says, uh, it's no secret that everything following Avengers Endgame has been pushing full bore wokeness as the primary element, and it hasn't been working. The question is whether the same wokeness is what's causing the problem, or if people are simply exhausted after a decade of superhero movies. Uh, woke politics were already starting to infiltrate the MCU before Phase Three and had run before Phase Three had run its course. The most notorious example was Captain Marvel, starring the unpalatable Brie Larson, who decided to go rip on fans while simultaneously insinuating that the audio technicians are perverted gropers. I 
don't remember okay. that. That's I don't remember that story at all. Uh, I mean, I remember her being really antagonistic towards fans, and I remember how forced the scene was in uh, Avengers when they had all of the women characters get together to take on Thanos, and it just mm-hmm. felt really forced and painted in by uh, by the studio. Mm-hmm. Like, we need to get this shot in there that nobody really cares about, uh, and it just didn't feel organic to the scene. Like, why would all the women be in the same place at the same time anyways? <laughs> so it says oh, that Jesus. being said wokeness night might not be what's killing the MCU at least not entirely if anything it's the cherry on top of a cake that's quickly going stale considering the box office performance of competing properties that have done nothing to that have nothing to do with the with the superhero craze uh, over a month since its release, The Eternals has managed to snag a scant, paltry 350, oh, I'm sorry, $385 million, and that's after taking worldwide earnings into account. So it's not even 30, $385 million in America. It's $385 million total box office, and that cost over $200 million to make. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, I think they said, yeah, see right here, Endgame spent an eye-watering $200 million just on advertising alone. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife has been out for a little over two weeks yet has managed to rack up $147 million over a $75 million budget sans marketing uh, I think so you take 75 I think they'd say that, that would make the movie about $140 million to make um, mm-hmm. <laughs> smaller budget movies smaller budget movies is the way to go uh, focus more on storytelling fo- get back you know there's decades and decades of source material here mm-hmm. that they can use to tell smaller stories i'm just saying that i was really excited when godzilla versus kong mm-hmm. came out that was like the movie i was really excited for like i didn't care about the superhero movies i'm like i want to see a giant monkey fight a giant lizard that shoots fire who doesn't <laughs> and those movies do did mm-hmm. fairly well. I mean, they that one, did. It, it, that crossed a hundred million, right? Or yeah, was, I it, believe so. It was at like ninety nine at one point. I remember mm-hmm. it was like it was like creeping along and getting close to a hundred million. Mm-hmm. But that was at a time earlier in twenty twenty one when those when that wasn't happening regularly. Yeah. So I mean, I. I've liked those movies. I've only I only ever watch them once or twice. They don't have a lot of rewatch value to me, yeah. but they are very like a good way to kill two and a half hours. Where I don't leave it angry, yeah, and I don't leave it I don't leave I it overly just, pumped, but I don't mm-hmm. leave it angry either. I was so excited. I was like, yeah, you get them, Godzilla. Did you like it? I did, and I was reading for Godzilla. Of course you were. <laughs> what was that supposed to be? Of course you. Were. Of course. Who, Dude, he's the king of the monsters. Like, legit, that was his last movie. Yep. King Kong is nothing. But apparently, there's a theory that that's not even King Kong's, like, full size yet. He's Ooh. not a gr- grown adult. That he's still sense. a teenager. Oh, I was wondering why you brought it up. I was like... Right? <laughs> yeah, sorry. I was like, I was like she's being very... Tan- she's she's kind of being tangenty today. But the, the, it makes perfect sense now. There's a picture of it right here. Yeah. Sorry. Also, I apologize. No, I was judging good. you silently, and I was wrong. <laughs> that was that was my fault. That's okay. But um, <laughs> to come back when I said the inhuman sting, my mm-hmm. bad. I just got recommended an article. It's an old article, so... It was from 2019, and they said that they're waiting for Marvel to, waiting. Um, Marvel's waiting till Agents of Shield ends to reboot. Um, yeah, it'll be. Inhumans. It's gonna be. Ne- it won't be till 2024 when they do X Men. I bet. I know, but still, like, I didn't really like Inhumans that much. It was kind of nobody kinda, did. Uh, I don't know anybody that actually finished it. I um, watched like one episode, and I was already done. The because media I got didn't. The gist. Yeah, and the media didn't really like it either, which yeah. is weird because, you know, the media tends to stand very hard for Marvel mm-hmm. and do their best to cover when they have bad products coming mm-hmm. out. That's, you know. Well, I, I give them credit, like the main character, the guy that, like, never talks. That was kind of a good concept why he didn't talk. Love that actor, Anson mm-hmm. Mount. Anson Mount is a fantastic actor. Yeah, I was looking for it. My bad. Did you ever see the show Hell on Wheels? Sounds familiar. No, it was like a, it was like an AMC show from uh, Anson Mount. But if you ever get a chance, anybody out there, if you're if you're sick of superhero uh, stuff and you want to watch something that's a little watch little, Godzilla movies, watch Godzilla movies, and also go see uh, go watch the show uh, Hell on Wheels. It's very very good. The original Godzilla movies are so funny. I've only ever I don't think I've ever seen the actual original. Like oh really? The, no, I don't. It's like. It's really funny because, like, you know it's a man wearing a costume. He's just, like, yeah. fighting on a miniature set. But it's so good. <laughs> well, y- yeah. <laughs> because it's just, like, brainless fun. You're watching, like, 
monsters fight each other, and you know who's gonna win at the end. And that well, that's what I'm these shows, these movies should be that way, mm-hmm. but they don't feel that way. They feel like they're packed full of agenda mm-hmm. and studio notes telling you how mm-hmm. things have to be for the purpose of social engineering. Uh, I'm the only one who's liking Hawkeye, <laughs> apparently. Yeah. Uh, but for the most part, all of the other MCU TV shows are going along, going the same route as the movies, meaning that people aren't really... Like, WandaVision got good press at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Falcon and Winter Soldier was... A lot of people mm. stop watching it mid mid um, mid season mid. because like they became woke. So it's like people are just a, they're in tune to when this stuff starts to be kind of hammered down their throats, mm-hmm. and they're just over it. Yeah. And for me, like I I tend to be on the side of I'll watch it, uh-huh. but it doesn't mean that I'm going to give it a favorable. Like I'm actually surprised how much I'm liking Hawkeye. More than the the other ones that have come out this year, I thought Shang Chi, Shang Chi, excuse me, was okay, but Eternals was bleh. So it's like I never got to watch it, and I don't want to, it, even though I love Angelina Jolie. And, and uh, yeah, she was the only part of the movie. I I, I would tell everyone, I'm like she's the whole movie should have been about her. It but, should have been because it, like, did you do research about her character? I yeah. The, about uh, I don't remember the name of the character now. Um, um Athena. 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 Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Athena. So basically, I didn't know anything about the mm-hmm. Eternal. That was not a series I read growing up. Mm-hmm. So, I I did a little bit of research, but I didn't really care about it. But Athena's character was really good because basically, um, basically she, like one of the creatures. I forgot what the creatures are called. The ones that are trying to start uh the story Earth. Mm-hmm. Basically, one of them is in love with her, and like it's like an ongoing battle between their love for each other. Well, I, like I said, that could have been its mm-hmm. own movie on its own, right? It could have. But that's, uh, you know, that wasn't the story. And they want ensemble cast mm-hmm. now. They don't want solo movies as much. They want as many actors in there as possible. Yeah, because it makes money. But, like, her character is also related to Thanos. Like, mm-hmm. I believe she's Thanos' um, cousin. Mm-hmm. So, now, since we have Silver Fox, who's going to be played by Harry Styles, I don't know how it's going to be. It could work. I just if they well, want. Well, he's a good actor, but I just don't like his politics now. If, if they want these things to work, mm-hmm. they need to do smaller budget movies, and they need to space out. They need to not release so many. Like uh, smaller budget films focus more on storytelling and get away from the idea that everything has to be a uh, some type of weird socio political agenda mm-hmm. in our pop culture entertainment. It doesn't need to be that way. Do you think that's what's killing Disney? Uh. I think it has. I think it plays a serious role. I think the mm-hmm. MCU is uh, suffering from the same things that uh, the Lucasfilm Story Group is going through, but at a slower pace. Mm-hmm. Uh, Disney has a lot more goodwill. Or Disney, Marvel has a lot more goodwill built up mm-hmm. than Disney does, just because yeah. of how bad the the trilogy went, mm-hmm. um, a sequel trilogy. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think that. Uh, most of these Marvel movies, like for instance, the things about Eternals that I didn't like had nothing to do with wokeness. It mm-hmm. just was a bad movie. Yeah. So I don't really care about the politics of the movies as much. I can forgive a lot if it's, if it's a story that's told well. Mm-hmm. But they're not telling good stories right now, and they need to get back to that. Yeah. I, I just don't know mm-hmm. because, like, for me... Like, I, I don't even like talking... Sorry, I don't even like mentioning, like, mm-hmm. woke, woke, wokeness in politics and this stuff because it's mm-hmm. not, like... It's, it's being used, like... I understand why these people talk about it that mm-hmm. way because it, it sells clicks to, to talk about that stuff. But I think it's just bad storytelling in a lot yeah. of ways. It is. I don't know. Because, like, th- there's, like, better ways to talk about, like, social... Um, like social politics like you remember that show i told you that i'm rewatching ugly betty mm-hmm. i'm almost done i'm on season three mm-hmm. there's only four seasons but they do talk about it because she's like the fashion industry is really like they're not they're really unapologetic about how beauty is mm-hmm. they want a pretty um pretty little girl that's like nice and skinny and betty's like trying to rewire like rewrite write it it almost seems like yeah. it makes more sense in that industry. Yeah, like, it makes sense because like, like those talking points mm-hmm. make more sense to me in fashion than they mm-hmm. do in superhero stuff because exactly. superhero stuff just feels like it should be about everybody. But like how they wrote it, it was so beautifully done. Yeah. I did get annoyed with like one episode where like she talks about it a lot, but one of the characters that's like her new love interest of the of mm-hmm. the week, like basically he called her out. He's like, "You don't like you judge everybody, but when somebody judges you, 
they you get butt hurt about it see that's awesome yeah like he called her out because like um the guy that was like her new love interest is her partner for mm-hmm. her, their classes okay and he works for a sports magazine and she works for a fagin uh fagin what's a uh, fashion uh, fashion magazine i'm guessing you. You meant. yes yeah a fashion magazine but like she she's not interested in sports but that's the whole point like that was the whole assignment you learn uh, like a new thing yeah. and slowly she like gets an idea she's like oh this is how i can do a new runway show idea mm-hmm. i just need to talk to the designer and get his full story because like how the guy that works in the sports magazine he was like i don't really care about sports but i care about the players they all came from different backgrounds yeah and i thought that was beautifully yeah. done like if you can if you can write something that talks about politics or social things like that, you can do it beautifully done, like how Ugly Betty did. It was mm-hmm. much uh, more deftly performed in yeah. the past. It's yeah, much it more uh, sledgehammer now than it is mm-hmm. scalpel. Yeah, exactly. Like um, Ugly Betty had a nephew who's gay, mm-hmm. and like they wrote it beautifully too. Like it was like within the first season where yeah. like um, one of the characters, his name is Mark. Um, the actor for Mark, like he's in a new Netflix movie. We have to watch it. Okay. It's called single all day. (laughs) Sounds like (laughs) right up my alley. (laughs) But basically like, um, he pretends to be straight. Um, but his mom said something really anti-gay about her nephew and he got upset about it. He's like, if you can't, if you can't accept him, you can't accept me. Yeah. And I thought that was really good. Like it, this was like mid two thousands. They wrote this. Yep, it was much much more uh, mm-hmm. deftly performed and much more nuanced in the way these things were portrayed back then. I would mm-hmm. like to see Hollywood return to that. I don't know. Hollywood is just weird. Thanks for watching this clip, guys. If you want to see full episodes or follow us on social media, links are in the description below. Bye. Bye.